Hey everybody, it's your favorite bastard, and today we're doing something a little unique. We're going to be doing a dry brined Cornish hen. What is a Cornish hen? It's basically a tiny chicken. This is about half the size of those rotisserie chickens you see at the store. It's going to give us about two servings, depending on how hungry you are. So, and this was organic, so you pay a little extra, but it was still just $5 for this, which I think is a good deal. So, first and foremost, when you buy these, they're typically frozen. Throw them in your fridge or leave them in your sink for a while. You want to make sure this is completely thawed. And then you want to carefully open this. I'm going to recommend you open it over your sink because this is basically a water balloon of meat juice. Just to show you so I don't have to move the camera around, I'm going to be opening this bag over a pot. There's no real right way to open these. So just have at it like a bag of chips. You're probably getting some ch gross chicken in a can vibes from this, I assure you. It's going to look completely fine. So this actually didn't have all that... Oh, there it goes. So it looks like a lot of it was hiding inside the butthole of the chicken there. Give it a little shake. All right, set the pot aside. Move it over to some paper towel because we've got a lot of moisture to take off this bad boy. It is very important for this particular dish. You get as much moisture off of this as possible because we are doing a dry brine, which I'm gonna elaborate on once we get this guy toweled off. So again, paper towel or a clean kitchen cloth that hopefully won't leave too much lint on your bird. Under the arms there. Legs, excuse me. Looks like we got a broken leg, not the end of the world. All right. So mostly got it toweled off at this point. We're going to be doing a little more here shortly, because what we are going to do now is spatchcock. All right, so you want the bird to be on its breast with the back or spine. If you need help locating it, just put it head side up, and there's your spine right there. You're going to want a good, sturdy knife for this. It doesn't need to be super sharp. It just needs to be tough. You could use a serrated knife, that might be easier for you. I'm using my Chinese cleaver. So identify the spine and just start hacking at it. The smaller the bird, the easier this is gonna be because it has smaller bones. If you're doing this on something like a turkey, that's when it gets a little more interesting. This is also why you want this bad boy to be completely thawed. If this was still partially frozen on the inside, this would be horrid. And we got some gristle there that doesn't want to come off. That Chinese cleaver is not particularly sharp. It's just good at crushing bone. All right. So once you got it started, it's pretty darn easy to do the other side. Just grab, good grip, and all right, so I made that a little more awkward than it should have been. Of course, I got a camera in my face. This is the spine. Yeah, kind of gruesome. Anyways, if you're wanting to preserve this, you could throw this in some stock, use it for soup, possibly gravy. But I don't have a use for that right now, so you can just chuck it. All right, final step of the spatchcocking process. You can put your knife away. Lay it backside down on your cutting board or surface. You want to press it completely flat. You might hear some cracking. That's a good sound. You're essentially just kind of breaking the bone so this thing lies flat. 
So now you have spatchcocked. What this has done is take a weird three-dimensional object and flattened it. You could just throw this on the grill or it'll bake in your oven much more quickly. And that's kind of the advantage of spatchcocking. Now it'll lay flat. You could cook it like a chicken breast, pork chops, or a steak. You want to be an absolute mad lad about getting any of this excess moisture off. You might be going through a lot of paper towels with this, and that's to be expected. All right, and before you get yourself all worked up, just being insane about getting every little piece of moisture off this guy, it doesn't need to be perfectly bone dry. There's gonna be moisture from within the meat itself that sort of leaks its way out. Just do the best you can with what you got. Okay, so you got your bird dried well enough. Get yourself a vessel and pour a bunch of salt in it. And I mean a lot of salt. Uh, for this little bird here, I'd say I added about two to three tablespoons of salt and about a tablespoon of some Mrs. Dash seasoning. The seasoning you add here isn't going to be terribly important because what will happen is we're going to be dumping a bunch of salt on this bird. That's going to pull the moisture out. It's going to dry out everything. And then we're going to leave it in our fridge overnight or even longer if need be. And then we're going to wash it all off. You're not going to be getting much flavor added with this stuff because, again, it's going to be washed off because eating horribly salty chicken is not fun. So, start applying this salt to your chicken. We are going to work it in with our hands. And some people who do this uh, particular recipe or this process uh, make a big deal about getting under the skin. I don't think that's such a big deal. So of course, flip that bird over and you wanna get the underside as well. You're probably thinking, holy cow, this is gonna be so salty. It's gonna be gross and disgusting. No, because we're gonna wash it off. And now you're probably thinking, what, wash it? Yes, but I have a very specific way of washing it that is not gross or dangerous. Okay, I'm going to say we had about the perfect amount of salt in there for this guy. And again, work it in. And you'll see that this is starting to glisten. It's because that salt is pulling moisture from within. And that's kind of the goal of this. Get whatever we had left on there. Now there are recipes out there that just have you cover meat, just absolutely layer it with salt, like it has a salt crust on the outside. We're not really going for that. You certainly could, but not the goal here. So I'm gonna call that good enough. And now what you do is you're gonna put this in your fridge completely uncovered and you're going to leave it like that overnight or for a day or so. However long it takes, I'll show you what the finished product should look like. Okay, so again, you're going to just like this on a plate or platter, whatever vessel you're using, in the fridge, uncovered, leave it like this overnight or for an entire day. You want to be looking for something that almost looks mummified because that's what the salt is doing is it's pulling all that moisture out. So this might seem like some mad scientist shit, but you've seen my videos, you know my taste, you know I'm not a big fan of salty flavor and I'm controlling my sodium in my diet. So the excess salt is going to wash off when I demonstrate that in the follow-up here. And we're gonna be left with this perfectly brined chicken that when you bake it, since there's no moisture left in it, it just comes out perfectly baked and crispy. You'll see, trust me. All right, day two. As you can see here, the meat looks significantly different than it did yesterday. And this is kind of the goal. This is the look you're looking for. 
Uh, so this meat has darkened. We've pulled the moisture out of the skin and meat. So that skin is kind of pressed a little more firmly against the meat now. It's almost like it's slightly mummified. And that's kind of the idea behind the salt. So this was a little weird uh, this morning. I came to check on it. And there was actually a puddle of water in the plate itself. That's why there's a paper towel here. I don't know what went wrong there. Maybe I should have toweled it off more. Uh, maybe there was still some ice on it left over from when I pulled it from the freezer. Hard to say, but added a little more salts, dabbed it with a little more paper towel. So it may look better when you do it. It may look better than what I have here. But regardless, what we have right now is going to be perfectly fine. One more thing I wanted to go over. You do not need to only give it a day in the fridge. As long as your fridge is not nasty, you can leave this in for multiple days to dry it out further. Because you are covering it in salt and you're pulling the moisture out of it, that's going to inhibit any kind of rot or spoilage. So this is also a preservation technique. All right, so now the tricky, delicate process of getting all that salt off of our bird. Uh, now I recommend you get a big old bowl, mixing bowl, whatever kind of vessel you might have. You can also just use a big pot, put it in your sink, fill it with some cool or cold water. Don't use warm or hot water. And you wanna start that guy. Go ahead and gently put it in. You do not want to be splashing. What can happen is water contacts your raw chicken meat and then it splashes and goes onto a surface. Now you're spreading salmonella around. Uh, give it a few moments in here. Kind of work it around. Let that salt mingle with the water and get off your bird. Carefully pour it out. And almost like when you wash rice. Pour it out. Add fresh water back in. So again, work it around. You're probably wondering, gosh, doesn't that just undo everything you just did of pulling all the moisture out of the chicken? Not really. There was a lot of moisture inside the meat itself. This water is really only contacting the surface. If we had let the meat soak for like an hour in this water, yeah, it probably would undo everything we just did, but just a few seconds in there. Put it back to your cutting board with some fresh paper towel. Hopefully you learned yesterday, or from earlier in the video, how to paper towel a chicken or bird. Pretty much the same concept. Just get some paper towel, clean cloth, and you're just getting all that moisture off. Because, like earlier, we want this guy to be as dry as possible. What I'm suspecting is we may have had some moisture get caught under the skin and real nooks and crannies there. And that's why it had so much leaking out earlier. Or overnight. Leaking out overnight, like I mentioned. Okay, I'm going to call that sufficient. As you can see, we still got that really lovely hue or color on the meat there. So we haven't really undone or damaged all that work we just did. All right, and we are back with some seasoning. Uh, this is about equal parts sage, thyme, and the Happy Belly Italian seasoning I've mentioned before. I keep using this stuff because of how basic it is. You can see from the list of ingredients there. This isn't stuff that's really going to overpower, clash, or conflict with anything else you're putting in the dish. And it's a great addition to any chicken or turkey or bird dish you got going on. So, kind of like how we applied the salts. It's probably a little too much. Just rub it in. And yeah, I hear that gurgling noise. Sounds like we got a little more moisture still stuck in there somewhere, but I'm not going to lose my mind hunting for it. Okay, 
get the back side. Again, just rub it into all the places you can. And this will kind of boil down to personal preference. Okay, good enough. These wings in particular are going to be really interesting once this is done. Okay. And go ahead and get under the skin as well. Just for fun. Okay, this bird is ready to roast. One more thing to mention. At this point, because we spatchcocked it, you could just throw it on your grill. And it'll fry like any other flat piece of meat, like a steak, pork chop, or chicken breast. But of course, in this case, I'm going to be putting it in the oven, and we're going to be cooking it at a modest 350 degrees. Okay, so when that skin is looking nice and crispy, go ahead and pull it. Give it a poke with your thermo pen just to make sure it is cooked all the way through. The nice part about spatchcocking is that you make the piece of meat much more thinner, much more flat, so it usually does cook evenly and all the way through, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Now, looking at this, though, first off, that is some beautiful, crispy skin, but also, okay, I was a little over-enthusiastic with that seasoning rub. It's kind of thick in parts. However, that's just on the skin. Think of it as like a just an over-seasoned potato chip, like the Dorito that's at the bottom of the bag, and the meat underneath should be fine. Okay, we've given the bird a few minutes to temp. So now we're just going to go ahead and cut into it. This is actually a lot of meat. The camera might be hiding the scale of this. But this is a little more than a single serving for a person. In fact, it's almost exactly two good portions for someone. If you're not such a carnivore, you could divide this up more. But I'm going to say split it right down the center. It's almost marked for you. And since there's no spine on this, butchering this is a little easier. Just cut through, and it can be a little tricky because I left the keel bone in. But let me just go ahead and there we go. Easy as that. Now you have two perfect portions of a nice dry brined hen.